Stay right here, buddy. Come here, Cece will show you what to pick. Hey, hey, y'all, and welcome. I'm Tiffany, and this is our small town life. I'm so happy to have you here today. Uh, if you're new, we would love to have you stick around and be part of our YouTube family. And if you're one of us already and you're coming back to watch another video, we sure do appreciate you. So we're in the yard today doing a little backyard foraging, and we thought we'd bring you along. We are picking some purple dead nettle today, harvesting purple dead nettle, and we're gonna dry it out so we can use it for some different things, and I'll tell you about those. Um, but let me show you what it looks like. And I have been looking around to see if I could find some hen bit. I actually think I see some right there. That way that I that way I can show you as a comparison what we're looking for because sometimes those two can get confused. Although if you know what you're looking for, you can tell them apart pretty quick. Let me come in a little closer and show you the purple dead nettle. Now it's called dead nettle not because it's deadly, but because unlike its cousin stinging nettle it does not have any stinging properties to it and when you're looking for this it has a square stem i don't know if you can see that but it has a square stem heart-shaped leaves towards the top the leaves are usually a purpley color and there are light purple flowers on it this way you're going to talk to the chickens come here you can help mama no, bring that to me though. Now what Audrey has found here is a small hen bit. See if I'll see if you see a bigger one right over here. I think I see some over here. These have circular leaves and a darker purple flower. So both have purple flowers and green leaves on them, but very different and easy to tell apart. Now, these are good for a lot of things. And you know, I kind of got cracked up at Justin. We were in his mom's yard over the weekend and I had picked some of these and was talking to him about him. And he said, oh, a weed? I said, well, it's only a weed if you think of it that way, right? So this is quite powerful and it's a beautiful gift that God has given us. It is antibacterial. So we can use this. Uh, we're going to dry these leaves and flowers out and you can use this for things like um, salves and infused oils for bug bites or minor cuts and things. It's also a diuretic so help um, reduce water retention. And so we're going to go ahead and gather some of these up today and then we'll take them in the house and show you what we're going to do with them. This is in the mint family, although it does not taste like mint. It does spread really quickly like mint does. And we're breaking these off at the stem. They'll grow back. They also drop their seed pretty quickly as well. So I'm not really worried about over harvesting. Put it in the bucket. No, don't take them out of the bucket. You got to put them into the bucket. Put them in the bucket. The stem is also hollow, especially as it grows. Come here, why and help?
can apparently grow wild onion around here really well too. You can mow this down and it will grow back. Um, so I'm going to harvest a good bit before we come through and mow the grass. But I plan to harvest more as well while it's growing. Look at this clover. You need to give some of this to the chickens. Come here. Now you can um, make tinctures and things with these without drying them out. However, this particular batch I am going to dry out because I want to use it one to make salves and bombs like I was talking about for bug bites or little cuts and things like that. And I also want it to put into tea. And I'm thinking I might even try to make a simple syrup with some of it to add to lemonades during the summer. So we were talking about this earlier and I mentioned it being antibacterial and a diuretic. Y'all, it's also antifungal and anti-inflammatory. So a beautiful little weed. And purple is my favorite color. So I just look at this thing and think it's beautiful. So we got us a bucket full. We didn't even put a dent in where it is growing here in the yard. Um, and matter of fact, I see some more up here. Uh, didn't, didn't even put a dent in it really, but this will be a good start for us to work on. Now I put these in a colander and ran some cold water over them to rinse them well, rinse anything off of them, um, any little bugs or anything, which I may still find some more as I'm going through here. The ants seem to like these, but I just rinsed them in some cold water and I'm going to start by laying them out on paper towels to dry. Now you could, if um, you know you wanted to go through this process a little bit slower, you could lay them on paper towels, keep them turned, and slow dry them. I'm going to start them this way, and then I'm going to finish mine in the dehydrator just to make sure they're good and dry because of the way that I want to store these and the uses that I want, want them for. Right now I have a baby that sounds like he wants to eat, so I'm going to get these spread out, and I'm going to go feed the baby. And then once it's time to move on to the next step, I'll bring you back. Discard any leaves that look really rough, like these here. Uh, I'll just put those in a pile and those will go to the chickens. And any, any like roots that I accidentally pulled up, those will go to the chickens as well. I may keep some of the stem, like some of the top part, but I probably won't keep a lot of stem. I'm mostly going for flowers and the leaves that look good. I let this sit on this paper towel overnight, mostly because that's what worked for my schedule. And now I'm going through and breaking out the big pieces of stem and any leaves that look damaged. And I'm putting those in a bucket for the chickens. And then the flowers and leaves that look good are going on a pan to dehydrate. And I'm doing this over this paper towel because do you see all of these seed? that have fallen, all the seed that, have, that has fallen, I can take that and I can spread that somewhere else that I want it to grow. And these are very good at attracting pollinators, so it's another benefit.
this is finished it's nice and dry and I've had my bread rising next to it utilizing the warmth off the dehydrator but now all I have to do is let this cool and then I can store it in a mason jar in my pantry until I want to do whatever I want to do with it I may put some in tea I'm probably gonna use some of this I know I will use some of this to infuse oil to make a a balm for bug bites and little cuts and different things and I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and pick some more of this today or tomorrow and do another batch because it really is simple and it's fun and it's beneficial so I'm gonna let this cool down and then I will get it stored And it has smelled beautiful in here. Easton came in and he said, uh, it smells like outside. It smells like outdoors inside. So go out in your yard and take a look. See if you have some purple dead nettle to use. You could also harvest it from places that, as long as they've not sprayed, like at parks or on the side of the road, you'll find it there as well. As long as it hasn't been sprayed with anything you should be able to harvest it. But you might be surprised. It might be growing right in your backyard. We love you. We appreciate you. We'll see you in the next one. Bye, y'all.